I thought we were sailing on Haladriel, but apparently the showrunners decided to turn Elrond into Jacob Black. I'll admit, I had to look up the relationship between Elrond and Galadriel. I found out that she's actually his future mother-in-law. This show <laughs> keeps outdoing itself. Every time I think it's already gotten to the point of it can't get any more ridiculous than this, it manages to subvert my expectations. They're trying to get back at us because we all saw that Halbrand was Sauron in season one. So they're like, well, you guys probably didn't see this coming. Rings of power. We are finally done. I finally made it to the end. We finally got to see Celebrimbor sort of wake up from his nightmare when he finally realized that this whole time he's been manipulated by Anatar, his whole city has been burning down to ash. I mean, there's a war going on outside and he's just been locked up in his little tower making these rings and he finally realized he saw the glitch in the matrix which just happened to be a mouse running around on the ground in the same pattern and also a candle that never melted. And then he's trying to tell everyone. He's like, oh my god, Anatar is Sauron. You must, you must believe me. But nobody believes him, obviously, because Anatar has been manipulating everybody around him. He tries to tell Timu Galadriel, what is her name? You have to believe me! What the heck is her name? Oh, Merdania? Okay, don't quote me on that. I don't really know her name. Sauron, with a rolling R that I cannot say. Sauron. He was telling her that Celebrimbor was going a little cuckoo and now he actually does come off as going cuckoo and there's this scene where he's like just cut him open you'll see that his blood is black and, <laughs> and that was so ridiculous they're like okay Celebrimbor maybe you should go lay down Murdani is trying to calm Celebrimbor down and then Celebrimbor's like get your hands off me Sauron kind of twists his hand uses his little telekinetic magic which I didn't know he had no if he can just like twist his hand and then physically control the people around him, why were the orcs able to rebel against him in the first scene? Elrond and Gilgalad finally come with the Linden Elves. Well, he actually stops by Casa Doom first. My heart sings to see you, old friend. You tidal haired flowery tongue flagpole. They had a cute little moment and then he goes to Eregion and then he finds out that Adar has tied Galadriel up. Elrond, didn't you promise Galadriel that if it came down to her and the ring, you would choose the ring? But it seemed like he didn't want to give up her life. And then he goes to kiss her as like a farewell. And honestly, I don't I don't know. I'm trying to justify this kiss, okay? I've been trying to justify this kiss for two weeks. I don't know what their relationship is other than, you know, in the future. But maybe he had a thing for her. I don't... Did he have a thing for... Is this a thing? Can this be a thing? I just didn't expect to see Elrond kiss Galadriel before Halbrand, Sauron, Anatar kissed Galadriel. We're sailing on Haladriel, aren't we? What is going on? Oh, Elrond, what are you doing? And then I realized that he was actually just going, trying to get intimate with her so he could pass her the little pin thing so she can unlock her handcuffs. Did he like pass it through his mouth? Like that's why we needed the kiss because he put it in his mouth and he had to transfer it to her mouth. But then I watched the scene again and I'm like, he actually just hands it to her. Then why did you need to kiss? Is this some elvish gesture of farewell? Is this a thing? This is like having someone you friend zone suddenly just like throw themselves on you while you're tied up. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. I think this show has just gotten to my head. We also get a Ron Deer. He also shows up in a Region, which I don't even know why he went. Isn't he with Theo and Isildur and that lady with a fiance? Adar ends up getting the ring, okay? He's like fighting Elrond. He gets the ring. He gets Nenya or whatever. We go to episode eight, the final episode episode and it starts off with Durin and his dad Durin standing in the mountain and they're talking and then the Balrog shows up Durin's dad he's like possessed by the ring and yet last minute he takes it off and sacrifices himself to save his son which I guess would have been a beautiful moment if there was something building up to that but I'm just like 
The last time I saw him, he was possessed by the ring and all selfish and stuff. It was a scene that I felt like wasn't earned. There are so many moments in this show at the end, because now that we're at the end, I'm just like, you know, if you had a good buildup, maybe a lot of these scenes would have deserved its time to shine. But it just felt like a lot of these moments, they're just like, just imagine what happened leading up to this, because we're not going to show it to you. Now that his dad's gone, he is able to send his men, his dwarves, to help Elrond because last episode Elrond was like Durin will come and then Durin didn't come but then next episode he does come because his dad sacrificed himself in that time okay let's let's all remember that all of this in Casa Doom happened while the battle of Aragion was happening so I guess it happened quite quick or I don't know because time doesn't really work in this show. Kella Brimbor I kind of felt bad. Anatar got rid of him in a very cruel way. <laughs> Sauron's like, oh, I go by many names. <laughs> Calabrimbo was like, yeah, you can be the Lord of the Rings now because that's obviously not going to be me. <laughs> Poor Celebrimbor. There was also a moment where he was talking to Galadriel and Galadriel was sort of apologizing for not mentioning that Halbrand was Sauron. And he's just like, oh no, it's fine. I also have to blame myself because I kind of knew. I kind of knew he was Sauron, but you know, he made me feel so special that I just couldn't resist. And then Adar, Adar also gets deleted from this show in the weirdest way possible because, oh my God, there was a moment when Elrond was like, okay. Are you prepared to spend their lives so freely? So you're okay sacrificing all your children to fight Sauron. And then the orcs, especially his right-hand orc was like, oh my God, father, you don't care about us anymore? <laughs> Adar's response was just like, I just don't want you guys to be enslaved by Sauron. <laughs> and again, I'm just questioning. I'm just like, why? How is Adar even different from Sauron if he's just going to use the orcs as an army to fight all his battles? And the orcs keep going back and forth. One moment they're like loving family members and the next they're like savages. I also don't know what Adar is really trying to do until the end. Right before they, they're they about to delete Adar from this, he had the ring. He puts it on and then he becomes an elf again. Like his scars are all gone. He's healed. And then he has a change of heart. He's like, oh my God, I'm beautiful again. Let us actually write up a peace treaty. He's telling Galadriel this. He's like, we should just work together, take down Sauron and then just live in peace. Elves and orcs. Right hand orc comes back after meeting with Sauron and and you think that he's all injured, but the moment Adar goes over to check up on him because <laughs> my children. Right hand orc stabs Adar. They all start stabbing Adar. The orcs get rid of Adar the same way they got rid of Sauron in the first scene of this season. Anatar, Sauron, he walks over and he's like, ha, I finally got my revenge. Now you know what it's like to have your orc army rebel against you. I cannot believe Sauron went through all of this just so he could have Adar have a taste of his own medicine. I guess this was the show's way of making things come around full circle. <laughs> I love when a story comes around full circle, but this story seemed like it didn't need the circle. Sauron started and he walked in a circle to go back to the start. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know why he needed to do this. If he could just manipulate the orcs from the beginning, why did he allow the orcs to betray him just so he could do all of this? Two seasons of this billion dollar show was to show him going through all of this just to do the thing he could have done from the start. I guess the thing he gained from this was the rings. The rings of power. Anatar and Galadriel have their one-on-one, -on -one, one v one duel. The moment he transformed back to baby boy Halbrand, Galadriel's like, I can't stab this guy. I'm in love with him. He's like playing with her mind. You could tell he's holding back because he like has feelings. I don't know. Does he have feelings for her? They're trying to make it seem like he has feelings for her. But then in the end, he stabs her and then she jumps off a cliff instead of giving him the ring. I don't even know how she survived this. How is she still alive? But whatever. They use the ring. Okay, this is another full circle where Elrond puts on the ring. He puts on the ring, even though he was so against it. 
He was like, no, these rings have been touched by Sauron. We cannot use them. And now he's just like, F it. Puts it on. Heals Galadriel. And I totally skipped over the other storylines. Why? Because they're not really connected to this. Stranger Meteor Man. We finally get confirmation that he's Gandalf. Grand Elf. Gandalf. As Tom Bombadil says. You don't find the name, the name finds you. And he's like, oh yeah, everyone's gonna call me Gandalf. And Numenor, Numenor is still stupid. Even though Muriel went through the whole water test, the Valar deemed her worthy. Whatever was happening in Numenor, none of that even mattered. Because in the end, Farazhan is still coming out on top. Elendil escapes though, I think. I don't, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. I don't care about Numenor. And Asildor ended up kissing, kissing lady with a fiance. Which I'm just like, every kiss scene that has happened on screen has been like, what the heck? As a viewer, you would hope that when people kiss on screen, it's like, oh, finally, two people, they got together, okay? But in this show, it's like, what? 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 what what the heck okay we only got like what three kisses we got the poppy the poppy and the nobody kiss we got the elrond and galadriel kiss and now we have a seal door and lady with a fiance who is like literally outside the cottage <laughs> and she's just in there kissing a seal door she's like oh my god I thought I loved him until I met you. <laughs> Durin is now king, but I guess, I guess some people don't agree with that. Especially his brother, who's gonna try to overthrow him. I didn't even know he had a brother. But yeah, and then in the end, we just get Arondir, Gilgalad, Elrond, and Galadriel. And they're standing on top of the cliff like Lion King. And Gilgalad raises his sword, and then all the remaining elves are like cheering. Like they have a chance against Anatar, Sauron, Halbrand. Whatever his name is going to be. He goes by many names. He's probably going to have another name next season. If it ever comes. Hey,